This meeting will now come to order. This is a regular meeting of the Urbana Community Development Commission. And um, what I'd like to do right now is to welcome our new member, uh, Lisa. Would you like to say hello and tell us a little about yourself? <laughs> Hi, my name is Lisa Searing. Um, Lisa Beth is my full first name, but Lisa works well. Uh, I moved to here um, for the second time in 2000. I lived here for a year um, from 97 to 98 and then moved to Chicago for graduate school. Uh, I am a nursing professor at Illinois Wesleyan. Um, my spouse teaches in the middle school at Urbana. Um, we've been really happy to be here for the last 13 years. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the commission. Okay, next uh, we'll go ahead with roll call. <clears throat> Fred Cobb. Here. Janice Bankston. Here. Chris Diana. George Francis. Jerry Moreland. Brad Roof. Here. Lisa Beth Searing. Here. Ann Hines Silvers. Here. And uh, Chris Diana. Here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is uh, approval of the minutes. We have um, uh, draft minutes from March 26th, uh, our regular meeting. So we'll take, it a, uh, take a minute or two to review those, and uh, I'll entertain a motion for approval or corrections. Okay, um, having gone through the minutes, I'll entertain a motion for <clears throat> approval or corrections. Would someone like to make a motion? I move we approve them. Okay, we have a motion to uh, approve the minutes as written. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the March 26th meeting minutes as written. Uh, any questions or comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Ayes have it. Uh, minutes stand approved as written. Okay, next we have uh, petitions and communications. This is the part of the meeting where those of you in the audience, all hundred of you, um, <laughs> if you'd like to say something um, at this point, feel free to come forward. If not, we'll continue. Okay, next um, we have staff report. <clears throat> okay, um, you should have uh, received your copy of the uh, staff briefing. I uh, just wanted to point out um, that we received our official allocation for fiscal year 2013-2014. We had to base our annual action plan originally on a 5% cut for both CDBG and home and um, the allocation um, was different um, than there was actually an increase in a community development block grant and there was a bigger decrease in home. So, um, but we have been able to with um, our CDBG, we can also pay for some home admin and stuff. So that I think um, will help with that. Um, as you can see um, other things that we have been um, working on um, and 
regular meetings that we attend. Um, we are working presently on an application to the Federal Home Loan Bank of Chicago for um, their affordable housing program. And um, we're looking to get funds to help with our transitional housing units um, to rehab a couple of them and to do um, some new construction. So um, we've been working on that. I went to a training beginning of May and so we've been working on it. It's due this week. So um, we've been busy with that. And we're also doing uh, down payment assistance. So we have three applications that we're going to be submitting. Um, also, I wanted to, on behalf of the city, give Brad a street sign. Roadway. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. That's awesome. And then a certificate of appreciation. Wow. For you. Thank you very much. You're That's pretty neat. I've never seen this before. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, our public works department does those. So, um, yeah, um, so we did this because of after six years of uh, your retiring from the commission and moving on to <laughs> bigger and better things, so, or resting to decide what you want to do next, so. Well, thank you very <coughs> much. And I, I guess I, I'd just like to say that it's been a real pleasure to sit on the commission and get to know the various commissioners, and some are still here when I join and some aren't. But it's been very interesting <coughs> to learn about community development block grant and the home program and how all this stuff happens here and I hope that over six years I contributed a little bit to uh, this effort and I know that moving forward the staff has a lot of challenges as budgets continue to shrink and the amount of staff continues to shrink but I think it's in good hands where it's at right now so thank you um, also, I wanted to uh, give you an update regarding the Lenore Adams multi-use path. Um, Janelle has been out there, and she'll show a little bit about what she's seen. So, uh, the Lenore Adams multi-use path, if you recall, was a once just a grassy area that was utilized a lot for travel back and forth between um, accessing out to Philo Road from. Um, by Adams Street and then on the northern side of it at the end of Hunter. Um, so it has actually almost complete. I think they have a few last little perennials to put in, um, but it is a very, very wonderful path that is already being utilized. Um, it was eight feet wide, so it's larger than your normal sidewalk, um, but it has done a lot for the neighborhoods that it affects, and that would be the uh, LNAC, neighborhood group, Learman Neighborhood Action Committee, and the AMVETS 2 neighborhood. Um, so it has connected two neighborhoods and even being well lit also made those neighborhoods a little bit safer in what was a dark area. So we're very pleased with that project and glad that we could be a part of that and contribute in that area. Please drive by and see it. There are um, <coughs> four single family homes that are owner occupied that are I guess the most adjacent to that. Um, I believe my understanding is that they are going to keep up their corner of that but there will be a small maintenance part that our public works department um, will keep up with whether that's you know there's some I think there's some perennials and maybe some annual plants so the maintaining of that um, we will keep up with and then maintaining the lights which are solar powered so mm -hmm. low maintenance very very nice. We um, hope to take pictures, and if, if we do, we can bring those to show you if you're unable to drive by. Mm -hmm. So, I've got a question on that. You mentioned uh, before that uh, it would be wide enough for uh, emergency vehicles to use. Is it? Is it? It, it is. They could. Yeah. Um, it's not designed for to to you know really drive through. But in case of an emergency, yes, an emergency vehicle could actually hmm. go across there um, hmm. if they had to. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the staff report. 
Uh, okay, next we have old business. Um, anyone see anything in the minutes that reminded them of any of our old business? If not, I just I, I had one thing. Go ahead. Um, do did you guys have any update on if in the case in the future if the commission votes one way and the staff is recommending a different way, how you wanted to kind of formalize that mechanism to bring that when you guys bring it to council? Um, I do believe that um, when we do the, the memo that it it's bolded it clearly states the votes the difference um, and um, highlight it that way a lot of times um, we don't have a lot of time that we can say stuff but we definitely in the memo decided that we would highlight and bold that if there was any difference between our vote and the Commission and highlight that too so council. that will be in the memo highlighted specifically in some way yes it would be under the recommendation section okay. and it would it would be bold and it would they would be able to clearly see the okay see that mm -hmm. okay Go ahead. Uh, one question I forgot to ask on the uh, uh, on your update you mentioned with CDBG and home one was higher and one was lower mm -hmm. what was the net I mean the aggregate combination of the two that were since we were expecting five percent I believe that our um, I can figure that real quick um, initially we had requested in our annual action plan um, for the home program seven hundred and thirty seven thousand four hundred and thirty seven and the allocation that we received was 693,396. And then <clears throat> for the CDBG, we had estimated at 344,512, and we got an increase at 373,708. Were the, uh, the differences do simply to budgetary purposes coming from the government or were there any performance considerations that went into like a formula that resulted in the numbers honestly I, I don't know how they came up with these allocations because all along they had given us indications to look at 5% cut across the board so unless um, um, it has a lot to do with the change in how we're doing the census now in this country so as you all know if you filled out the last decennial census or whatever it was four questions and it didn't talk about a lot of the demographics that HUD would normally rely on for this kind of calculation in terms of our population size so in terms of the 5% cut that is probably I think that's what they saw in Washington mm -hmm. but that is not what every community saw because they based um, each city's population or entitlement community's population off of the American Community Survey data so that kind of change in data is what um, really changed our, our grant amount um, and the calculation itself may have changed too in light of that so if there were any issues with timeliness because I know that's kind of come up from time to time will they tell you that 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 like your amount is being reduced by this amount because like you got this score and timeliness or you know um, I assume so but we have never we I mean we our CDBG timeliness we always meet that and it has to be 1.5 and we either that or, or below and um, in terms of home they would reduce your grant amount for the next year um, if you you know can't spend or commit your last you know several hundred thousand dollars or whatever they'll just reduce your grant from there okay so that wasn't an issue at all with this reduction um, in this. terms of reduction no, I don't think the calculation works the same way as CDBG. I think I know you're referring to as your grant goes down, you actually have to spend money faster. Yeah, no, with home, you just have to commit um, within two years. So you know what your grant is. You have two years to commit as a matter of committing the funds or not. It's not like a percentage calculation the way that CDBG is factored. Yeah, overall, I would say, I mean, it looks like one's up by like whatever, 29, and one's down by 41. So. 12,000 on based on that that's like one brush so it was six percent instead of five which is probably about as close as estimating mm -hmm. could have gotten us so that's good mm -hmm. okay anyone else old business if not let's go to new business uh, first on a new business we have uh, uh, under the home program a resolution 
certifying a community housing development organization for the Urbana Home Consortium for fiscal year 2012-2013. This is Habitat for Humanity of Champaign County. Okay. Um, I'll let um, Jen talk, but uh, I think the, the next three are kind of um, all together. Related? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, sorry, I'm transitioning here. <laughs> um, so things are changing a little bit over at Habitat for Humanity. Habitat is the parent organization for Champaign County Neighborhood Alliance for Habitat, which was the subsidiary that they created um, to carry out the CHOTO activities. And that has to do with the regulations and requirements for you know, your board, all these other things that you have to meet. Um, Habitat's board is now in a position to actually qualify as a CHOTO. Um, the parent organization itself. And based on some of the extra expenses of operating two separate organizations with separate books, separate audits, some of those things start to rack up and both boards felt that it was probably time to um, kind of merge or you know, revert back to Habitat's original structure and just um, maintain CHOTO activities through Habitat for Humanity now. So they submitted a certifica certification application, which any time any of our CHOTOs request funding, they have to do that now. That's part of HUD's rules. Um, and they've met all the requirements, which is great. Um, they have the one-third low-income representation. They don't have too many you know, private sector people on there, which is awesome. And we're excited because this actually simplifies things for us, too. There's less paperwork. and crazy amounts mm -hmm. of lien waivers and stuff, since we're just dealing with one organization now. Um, so all that being said, included in this memo is their certification application um, and the resolution that goes along with that. And then they've also asked for, well, I guess I'm going to talk about almost the next memo too. They're asking for a few lots, and they want to build another house. So they're currently under contract for four homes. They completed their fiscal year 11-12 contract. They completed the four homes that were wrapped up in that contract, which is great and wonderful. They're making a lot of progress and they have very happy families. Um, and now they're working on their fiscal year 12-13 contract, which is another four houses. Um, but in order to not kind of put the cart before the horse, they are applying for funds as houses and families are identified. Um, so anyways, they, their next project is going to be at 1007 North Berkeley, which is a lot that we, the city, currently owns. Um, we acquired it and we intend to dispose of it to them. And they want to, let's see, they've requested, let's hope I say this in my memo. I don't think I wrote it. Oh, yeah, $37,910 in CHOTO funding, which is right in the ballpark of what we've been giving them um, in terms of a per unit subsidy for their houses. That's right around 50% of their construction cost. The other half obviously comes from a church or a business, some other local organization that wants to participate in the project. And along with, I think, I will say we've been giving them between thirty-five and 40000 So the Home Technical Committee met about this. They approved the funding amounts. And then you'll also recall, um, perhaps our new commissioner doesn't know, uh, the Home Technical Committee, which consists of um, the cities of Urbana, Champaign, and Champaign County, decided that we should be giving operating funds kind of in relation to how much you're building so that it should kind of match and go hand in hand. So the number that we came up with based on how many operating funds we had, the amount of projects that were on the ground, the number of organizations that we had at the time, we came up with a kind of random dollar amount of $7,000 per unit. So Habitat's requesting that same amount. That's the amount that we gave them for their 1213 contract. So that's in keeping with um, sort of our historical funding amounts for CHOTO operating. So. I believe that pretty much covers it. We're excited. This will be their fifth house for the coming year, and it should be cons finish up construction in 2014. But if you had other questions, Sheila Dodd is here, Executive Director of Habitat. Okay. Otherwise, I think that's all I really have. <coughs> questions, anyone? You have anything to add? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds like something that's probably going to work pretty well. Um, so with this, uh, notice there's no negative um, uh, impact on the city budget. Um, we have three options. One, to forward this resolution to the city council with a recommendation for approval. We can forward it with a recommendation 
uh, for approval with, su with suggested changes, or we can uh, not recommend it. So what is the pleasure of the commission? I'll entertain a motion for. I move that we forward it with recommendation for approval. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, forward the resolution to City Council with a recommendation for approval. And that co covers the, uh, the three items on page one of our agenda. Uh, any further questions, comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, no? Ayes have it. And the uh, motion carries. Okay, next we have an ordinance authorizing the sale of certain real estate, uh, 1007 North Berkeley, which was mentioned. Uh, do you want to do all of these together or? Okay. Go ahead. And uh, we will get an explanation of this from Jen. Sure. So this would be disp um, disposition of the units or the lots rather that we have purchased. The one is the one that I just talked about, 1007 North Berkeley. We've owned that one for a while. It's a smaller lot, so Homestead was never interested in it, but it's perfect for Habitat's construction style. Um, and then the other one is 810 East Park Street, which is one that we very recently acquired. Um, and that one, we have not actually a, granted any funds to Habitat for this one, but they just turned in an application for it. Mm -hmm. Since Habitat's been moving so quickly, I don't, staff hasn't had any qualms about deeding a lot, you know, before construction or a contract is in place, because they already have a home buyer, which is also kind of unique. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. And since they've already applied for the funds for 13, 14, we're assuming that we'll be able to move forward with it. So, and this allows the city to not have to do the maintenance. Habitat's willing to pick up the tab for that, which is really great. So this is, again, kind of things are moving so quickly. I don't have the time to put the paperwork together all the time as quickly as I'd like. So in our July meeting, we will probably talk about funding um, once we discuss the, the Home Technical Committee for 810 East Park. But for now, we're just deeding the lot to Habitat since they have identified a family that would, is interested in that lot and wants to build a house there. Mm -hmm. okay. The, the, uh, the <coughs> pictures in the back here, they both have structures on them currently? 810 East Park does not. This was a photo off of um, GIS, so it could just be that it was an older satellite photo, although I'm kind of surprised it's not updated. That was actually demoed before we even bought it, so we didn't have to do any demolition okay. there. I think it was like owned by Fannie Mae or one of those, it was like a HUD property or something. They tore it down and they were trying to get rid of it. So actually I think Randy was able to acquire it for a pretty low, yeah. low price, which is mm -hmm. really great. And then Berkeley, we acquired and demoed that structure? Yes, right. I believe so. We've had it for a while. Yeah, we've had it for so long. Randy's our expert. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, um, with these two items here, two parcels of land, I'll entertain a motion from the commission. We'll need to um, to authorize this in order to have everything work smoothly. I move that we uh, forward the ordinances authorizing the sale of both parcels to the City Council with a recommendation for approval. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to um, approve this uh, motion. Um, any further comment? Questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, no? Ayes have it. The motion carries. Okay, next we have an ordinance approving modifications to the City of Urbana and Urbana Home Consortium fiscal year 2012-2013 annual action plan. And this is regarding uh, transitional housing rehabilitation. And I will let, um, I think Jen's going to talk about this one as well. Okay, so this is kind of a partnership right here between me and Janelle. Um, 
We have been operating the transitional housing program since early 1990s, and I believe we originally acquired the properties with some rehab money to fix them up, get them in working order, and then get homeless families in transition in there. And we've been operating the program. Um, families are eligible to live in the units for two years. There's a whole self-sufficiency plan that goes along that, and Janelle works with them to help them seek employment, you know, get educated, that kind of thing. Um, anyways, we have not had any sort of federal funds to do major repairs since then. So that's a long time ago that we acquired the properties and really did any substantial rehabilitation on them and they're kind of due for some of those major repairs like fixing the roof and updating the furnace because it's really old, that sort of thing. So um, and identifying funds for this, we've kind of had to get creative. Um, we are, Kelly already mentioned that we are applying for some funds through the Federal Home Loan Bank of Chicago, which is really great. We're hoping to get some new construction funding as well as um, get some funding to put into rehabilitating some of the units. Um, but that's not going to cover everything. The way that the FHLB application is structured, you really can't request much more than like six grand a unit before you you start dropping down in their points system so much that you probably would not even get the application approved so we knew we had to come up with a pretty substantial source of funding and because we've been bringing in so much program income lately from all the whole house rehabilitation programs or whole house projects that randy does every year we do about five a year and then whenever pe people um, sell their houses down the road they have to pay back the deferred grant that was on their property or deferred loan rather and so that's 12,500 and we've had a few of those like really quickly out of nowhere so we knew we had some extra funds and obviously commitments I'm always talking about commitments anyways so um, with that we have we have five units that we've managed one of them is kind of beyond rehabilitation it would cost too much between what we have available in home funds and what we could get with FHLB. We would rather do new construction, which is one of the applications that Janelle has been working on. Um, two of them we lease um, from another entity for super cheap, which is really great. We're happy with those. Um, and then there are the other two that we own that we would like to rehab. So what we've suggested, and we've talked with HUD in Chicago, our field office, to kind of brainstorm, you know, how do we, can we use home funds to fi fix this up? Um, they were like, yeah, of course, which we didn't think it was an option, which is why we never considered it before. Um, so what we are suggesting or presenting is an amendment to, and let me make sure I'm saying the right annual action plan year. Okay. 11-12? Yeah, the 11-12 annual action plan to basically take two of Randy's projects that he would have done for single family owner occupied units mm -hmm. and take the funds from that and put it into rehabilitating our two transitional housing units. So it's a different kind of project um, because it involves, it's basically rental rehab is what we're doing, which normally we don't like to do rental rehab with private owners because the affordability terms are usually really stringent. It's not necessarily lucrative for them by any means, but since we are the city, we're not in it to make a profit. Um, we can, you know, withstand sort of the long, is it a 10, yeah, 10 year affordability term mm. that, you know, price tag, I guess, if you will, that will come with these. And because the need in the units is great enough, um, I guess we were kind of weighing our options and realized that this is probably a good route to go. So basically we would be doing what Randy does on an owner occupied house and instead doing it on our transitional housing units to bring them kind of up to speed with quality housing for the families that are living in them. So this is a lot, <laughs> and I said it kind of jumbled. So if there's anything Janelle wanted to add before people ask questions, I'm sure I missed something, I don't know. Is that good? Okay, does anyone have questions? I can kind of further explain things. But it is a minor amendment. We listed rental rehabilitation as an activity in the annual action plan for 11-12. And so we're just taking those funds and actually moving some of Randy's money for owner-occupied rehab and putting it into the rental rehab activity that we had listed. I got a couple questions. questions. Yeah. What's the nature of the repairs? It will be a lot of the mechanical, replacing the furnace and water heaters, roof work, um, installing central air conditioning into the units. Um, some units might need some other interior repairs um, in the bathroom as well as in the kitchen. 
and then some light maintenance um, things that we usually would use our community development block grant, our public service dollars for that we use to operate the program. Um, some of the lighter repairs that we would do there, it would be more advantageous to conserve those funds because they're limited by a cap and do it wrapped into the rehabilitation grant. And so o over the time that the program has been operating, how, how have these types of repairs been paid for in the past? We use our community development block grant. We have, so part of the 15% public service cap, we spread that in three ways. We combine some of that money into the consolidated social service funding pool. Um, some of those funds go towards the neighborhood cleanups that we do. Mm -hmm. And then the other portion is for the management, the operations, supportive services, and administration of the transitional housing program, which comes to about $45,000. That $45,000 goes a very long way. We spend at least close to $15,000 just on utilities for the five units. So it limits, in just keeping the utilities on, it limits what we can do in actual repairs. So we've made some minor service calls to be able to keep the units functioning, um, but to really make sure that the units are up to code, especially with some new changes that happened in what is known as the Hearth Act, the homeless Oh, I'm going to mess that acronym up. But they redid the act that talks about homeless management programs and services that you offer when you do a emergency shelter, a transitional housing program. And some of those are a little bit tighter now as far as the code requirements that they have if you are housing homeless families or children or homeless individuals. So to make sure that we're in line with those new guidelines coming out, it requires that we do some more really cold maintenance repairs that we have not been able to do because of the lack of funds. So th when you say code, it's not like the city of Urbana's building codes. This is a code for... It, no, it would be up to the city code, yes. Uh, but but what's, is it the city code that's driving it or this other, what you just said, Hearth? It's Hearth? the Hearth Act. It's the federal regulation, but the federal regulation binds you by the local code or the jurisdiction in which you're spending the money or the program is operating. So they kind of work hand in hand. Hmm. And has, have these buildings been grandfathered under old code? And that's why you've been able As to far, maintain right. them? Because once you reach, it, it kind of goes to a certain level of repair. So electrical, for example, once you reach a certain point in electrical repairs, it requires you bring everything up to today's code. If you're just doing a minor mm -hmm. repair, you can stay within the code that the house was built. So we would be at the point that we would be going past minor repairs mm -hmm. and have to bring things up to the current um, ICC code of 2009 hmm. or the 2012 book might actually be out now so in, in your opinion given the number of houses is this going to be a problem in the future as far as like where you need to get some sort of like one-time funding to make these necessary repairs or is there some plan to change the scope of the program so that it can be a little bit more self-sufficient from year to year to year I wouldn't say that it's a problem. It's been about 20 years um, since we've done, you know, we acquired the homes and did like a major renovation. So those renovations pretty much lasted their, their lifespan of what we could do. So this ideally would carry us for another 20 years. I don't think that we will need a major funding source to do these type of repairs. We are looking at possibly other grant opportunities maybe that we could have in the 14-15 fiscal year or 15-16 that will help us provide other dollars for operations and supportive services to manage the transitional housing program. Um, so that would help take that out of our community development block grant budget and put it into other funds provided we're awarded. But as far as this type of major repair, I think that we can go another 20 years. I guess I have a couple of questions. Um, are those two houses being occupied at the moment or at this particular yes. time? And, and what's the stat of the other three houses? They are um, unoccupied. Um, two of them that we lease, we are currently in transition with our leases. Um, we've had families that have moved out. Um, so we're kind of actually at a transition point with two families that recently moved out. The third unit that we own, the last family that moved out, um, there were some major renovations that were needed after that family left hmm. that we knew our funds could not sustain and that it wouldn't necessarily be the best option. That structure survived a fire. Um, 
know, about nine years ago. Um, so there were repairs that were done then, the limited repairs we could do based on the insurance. But there was also some foundation issues that we are now seeing by a tree that is right at that foundation and has broken into um, those cement blocks in the basement. So it would not, the rehab on it would be really from bottom up and it would not be worth the dollars to actually try to rehabilitate that particular unit. So it is currently still vacant. Um, and that would be a unit that we're looking to find other dollars from the Federal Home Loan Bank and see about demolishing that unit and rebuilding a new structure. Hmm. And uh, were those buildings, I mean, when were the last, I mean, you talk 91 for the, the two the, well, the three. The three. When, when were they, or the one particular one with the tree growing in the basement? Um, <laughs> when was that last rehabilitated, if you know offhand? If it's a um, probably about when the fire happened, I think, was when it had the most substantial repairs. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I think that was about eight or nine years yeah, ago. Yeah, about eight okay. or nine, nine years maybe ten at the most years right, right, right. ago. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, um, again, uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, to forward um, this am amendment to um, approving a, m a minor amendment and forward that to uh, Urbana City Council with a recommendation for approval or we can suggest a change or we cannot recommend. Would someone like to make a motion? I move that we uh, forward the ordinance approving the minor amendment to the City of Urbana and Urbana Home Consortium 2011-2012 annual action plan for transitional housing rental rehab for approval. City Council. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Approving the uh, afore discussed issue. Um, any more comments or questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Ayes have it, and the motion carries. Okay. Um, now we move into the uh, supportive housing program, and we have a resolution approving a supportive housing program subrecipient agreement between the City of Urbana and the Center for Women in Transition. What we'll do is so we'll put the, the two together because they're and, um, uh, the and for Salvation Army and um, Janelle will yes. talk on this. Oh. Okay. And also the Salvation Army. Okay. Um, would like to address that? Yes. So the supportive housing program, um, these are federal dollars that we get from, the fe from HUD um, to operate <coughs> homeless programs. And they actually go to two shelters, the Center for Women in Transition and the Salvation Army. Urbana acts as the administrator, and we receive the funds that go to the two agencies, um, and they actually operate three programs. If you remember a while back, the Center for Women in Transition um, took over what was the domestic violence shelter on East Main. It was a woman's fund. Now it's been renamed a woman's place. So they are still receiving the federal dollars to operate a woman's place as well as their homeless programs that they offer um, at the Center of Women in Transition on Church Street as well as the Salvation Army has a transitional housing program that is very, very similar to ours in the three single family units. Um, so they receive funds for operating services, supportive services, and administration costs. And then the city of Urbana also receives administration costs as well to administer the grant for those agencies. The program, again, it's really working with homeless families and homeless single women, um, providing them shelter. It's up to two years that they can be in the program and their case managers work with them on goals of being self-sufficient and how they can help move them into permanent housing um, after completing the program. This is the 18th year um, that this program has been administered through the city um, to the following agencies and it's going quite well. And I can answer any questions if you have any or provide more information if you'd like.
the, <laughs> the way the accounting system is set up is that it all of the money that we get from the federal government is all reimbursement. We are not given any money up front. So it requires that the city actually provide us with sort of a line of credit to be able to use, and then we draw down the money from HUD. Most, mostly all of their programs operate on a reimbursement of expenditures after you show the documentation that you've spent them. So we always mention about fiscal impacts on the city's budget because it really, the activities we do if we were not already receiving the grant agreement, you know, if we already didn't know that the money had been committed to us, it could affect, it could have a fiscal impact because the city would front that money and would not receive it back. So when we come to the commission and start this process, we have already received our executed grant agreement from HUD. They have funded our account um, in what's called a line of credit control systems. So once that money is there, it's kind of like in our bank account that we can pull back from after we show we've spent the money. So in that regard, it doesn't affect the city budget because it will be an even transfer. Well, was that part of our mission to protect city funds? No. I, well, I, I probably can't answer that. I don't. <laughs> I think that part of it is also how we try to structure the information that we provide to, because there could be maybe a time when something could affect the council budget or the city budget, but at this time, there's not anything that we're bringing before you that does. Could I ask one more question sure. first? Um, just, and I, I don't disagree with what you were just saying, but in there, the the line item there for the for the five thousand one hundred thirty five dollars that goes actually to the city of Urbana for administrative, right? Yes, okay. that will be um, part of the administrative cost. There there is a new line item that each agency has. Mm -hmm. Another component of this is that HUD likes to collect data, and there is a homeless management information system that all users within Champaign County use that we collect all this data and it's uploaded and then HUD can see it for our particular continuum, compare mm -hmm. it to the state, compare it nationally. The funds that have been used um, to pay for the licenses is starting to decrease and they may not be there for this upcoming year. So each agency may actually have to pay for their own user license. Mm -hmm. So it does include the funds that would um, cover that. If it works out, we don't know what that allocation is from HUD, whether or not the agency that is receiving the funds to pay for licenses will get their money. If they do not get the money, then the entire amount will go to administration. If not, we have set aside a small portion of that, um, specifically $800, to go towards the payment of the license so that we can maintain entering the data and right. being able to do the reports that HUD requires. Okay, but but that money does come, it is going to the city of Urbana. But that work would have to be done regardless of whether we recovered this money or not. Yes. Regardless, it was still right. So if we didn't, it's not very much money to administer the, I, the grant. I know but it's, it's not very it, much, and this not. may be splitting hairs, but then it <laughs> really isn't correct to say that it doesn't impact the city general fund because if this money was not recovered, it would be paid by something. Well, it, it still wouldn't have a fiscal impact. If we did not get the 5135, it would not impact the administration that we've already budgeted. We were very, very careful in our budget in making sure that we could cover, because we had not received the award letter yet at the time that we had presented the annual action plan. So I was very, very conscious about providing the budget as far as administration costs that we can go back and add this money in, but it was not going to hurt us if we did not get it. Right. I guess I'm just mildly confused by the fact that we did get it, it does impact us. I mean, it positively impacts us, but okay. do you follow what I mean? You see, it can't I be a line item and not impact us, okay. would be my point. I think this is, yeah, I think it's meaning more like in a negative, but you are saying it's it is in a positive it way. very it is. fine, but to mm -hmm. actually state it that way isn't correct. Sure. Okay, um, we need a motion. Someone like to make a motion? I would move that okay. we uh, forward this to, let's see, we need to forward this resolution, 
approving the agreements with the city for uh, with the Center for Women in Transition and Salvation Army mm -hmm. to the City Council with a recommendation for approval. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, to forward the resolution to City Council uh, with a recommendation for approval. Any further comments or questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, no? Ayes have it, and the motion carries. Okay. Um, that uh, concludes the uh, items on our agenda. Uh, would the commission like to bring up any other issue before adjournment? Kelly, uh, nothing? No, I think that um, we've gotten to the agenda and mm -hmm. no other items. So. Okay. We will be having a, a meeting in July. We will have some agenda items for mm -hmm. July. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for your participation and attention. And uh, uh, meeting is now adjourned.